we see? Yes. Uh, no, physics. Physics, atoms, photons. Here we go. Does that count as breakfast or lunch? Mm. Brunch, okay. Brunch. I just finished my breakfast. You just finished your breakfast because you just came in now. Uh, 12 past 50. Past 50. Yeah, it must be difficult being a student. Very difficult life. <laughs> Tough life, huh? Right, photons. You got that? Yeah. Uh, okay, so a few, a good few things to look at today, I'm afraid. A quantum. I think I have this. I don't know if I have the English backwards here. I think quantum is singular and quanta is plural. But now I'm not sure. Do you have a dictionary handy on your phone? Could you like type in define quantum? I can't. I, I don't know if I have it backwards. I think this is the right way. I think I have it backwards. <coughs> Plural is quanta. I think it's one of those things that people perhaps misuse them in English, you know? So we have to be careful with it anyways. Quantum then is singular and quanta is plural. Okay, so what is a quantum? I'm sure you've heard of this word before, haven't you? Yeah, you did your active listening on it? No? Did you do some practice listening with this, no? No, oh, I thought you did, okay. Anyways, what is it? It's the minimum amount of any physical entity involved in an interaction. So, I'll give you an example. In chemistry, what's the smallest amount of the material you can have? It's the atom. You could like, you know, what's the smallest amount of hydrogen gas you could have? Well, I suppose it would be one hydrogen atom. Like, you couldn't have half a hydrogen atom, right? Yeah. Uh, what's another example? Um, what else do you do? You do maths. That doesn't really. Um. <coughs> I think the chemistry example was the best one. You probably don't. I suppose another example might be from just day to day life. You know, like what's the smallest amount of money that you could have? What's the smallest amount of money you could have? One cent. You couldn't have less than one cent. So the idea is a quantum is like the smallest unit of something. You get the idea for this? Yeah. Okay. Got that, Joe? Mm. Yeah, continue. So, so far we had no need for quanta. For example, we don't have a, now see, I think, I'm not sure if I'm misusing it, I should say a quantum of distance. Oh, my English is so bad. Do I need the singular or the plural here? Quantum is more commonly phrased. Yeah. One of them, anyways. Uh, quantum or quanta of distance, uh, that is, there's no such thing as a minimum distance, right? For example, if you had 10 to the minus 10 meters, you could have 10 to the minus 11, right? You could have 10 to the minus 12. We don't understand that there's a minimum distance. There's no minimum distance, etc., etc. 
Okay, so for something like distance, there's no minimum. You just can just go normal. Um, okay, so what exactly is a <coughs> photon, which is the name of the lesson? So a photon is a single quantum of light, and it's referred to as a light quantum. I need to check the English after this lesson. I like your t-shirt. Very mathematical. Infinity. That's much better than topless boys. <laughs> well, I, I, that makes it a little better, I suppose. Okay, you got that? Yeah. So, we should think of light as a group of photons. So the, the simplest way for me to explain it is, you understand that like material is made up of lots of little atoms. Yeah? From chemistry, you know this. So we think of light as being made of many, many photons. It's almost like the photon is the atom of light. Does that make sense? Yeah? Have you ever heard of this idea before? Or is this a new idea? You might have heard of it before. So, uh, just to be clear, you can have some distance, you can have a smaller distance, and even smaller distance, and even smaller distance, and even smaller distance, and so on. No smallest. Okay. But for light, you can have some light, a smaller light wave, an even smaller light wave, even smaller, even smaller, and so on, but not forever. And then at some point you reach the smallest light wave, which is a photon of light. And then if you try to get less than this, then you have no light. You get the idea? Are we clear on that? Okay, good. Thus, a photon of light is like the atom of light. That is, you can have it and nothing smaller. Okay, good, good. Right. So, uh, what is a photon? Like, what, what exactly is it made of? So it's kind of like a particle of light. That is uh, a single, I see now, I don't know if I'm using quantum, quantum, whatever. Uh, a photon is a single particle of light. So another definition of a photon is you can just say it's a light, a particle of light. That's another definition of it. Tea or coffee? Tea. Tea? <coughs> I'm going to say green tea. Kind of. Kind of. Interesting. Not green tea? <coughs> I don't really like green tea. I only like black tea. You're the same? Green tea doesn't feel strong enough. Right? Yeah. Got that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Now, Einstein, believe it or not, discovered that the energy of a light photon or other radiation depends only on the frequency of the light. That is, the higher the frequency, the higher the energy. So, just to be clear, what Einstein said was, if the light has a higher frequency, then it has more energy. And the formula is very simple. Uh, Einstein found the formula, the energy is equal to this constant, this is called Planck's constant, multiplied by the frequency. So it's a simple formula. And you can see, it's quite straightforward, if you 
have twice as much frequency, then you have twice as much energy, and so on. H is Planck's constant, which is this value. And you can see the units for Planck's constant, whoops, it must be joule seconds because uh, frequency is per seconds, and we need to have joules as the answer. Now this formula is very important for chemistry, and it used to be on the chemistry IFY, but for some reason they removed it from the chemistry course, so you used to do this in chemistry, and if you study chemistry at university, you'll see this in your chemistry course. So it's actually an important formula in chemistry as well. Um, you're, you're going to be doing um, bio, what's it, biomedical? So you will definitely do chemistry, and you'll definitely see this formula here again. Uh, not you, you're doing? I'll let this Yes. Uh, would you do any chemistry with <coughs> that? I think they would have you do yeah. some, yeah. And what did you say you're doing, Ken? I forgot. Mechanical. Would you do any chemistry in that? Do you know? Yeah, I should do one of those. A semester of chemistry? So then you'll see this in the chemistry class. So you might be wondering why is uh, this formula has Planck's constant in it and not Einstein's constant if it was Einstein's formula. Uh, Planck's constant has other uses as well. So it just comes up in this formula. But Planck discovered that constant before Einstein, but it, it comes up in a different way. Uh, okay, so here's a very simple question. You have a photon of red light which has wavelength of 400 nanometers. And my question is, what's the frequency? So what formula would give us the frequency here? Yeah? Don't be shy. What is it? I'm sorry, you're so tired I can't pick out your words. And I'm so tired I can't understand them. Say again. You changed your mind? Ah, come on, guys. How do you change wavelength into frequency? Think back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're halfway finished. Yes. And what's the speed here? Oh, thank goodness. Okay, all right. So, can you calculate the first part here? What's the frequency? You guys make me worry so much. Right, so you said, let's open this up here, frequency equals C over wavelength, and what did you get? Like that? Yeah? Okay. Hertz. Yeah. Next. How much energy does this have? So E equals HF. Did you write down the value of H? Okay, so what's the energy here now? Ah, just two or three digits is okay. Four point nine seven times ten to the minus ten. Uh, joules. So then, lastly, I think I might ask you, what is this energy in electron volts? So how do you convert this energy into electron volts? You divide by the E constant. Um, so what is that, please? See by the, the, oh, you don't have the E on your calculator. So you need to divide by, what's the value? One point, oh, you have it on your calculator, yeah. Check. 
Cha will give you the value of E now. Or maybe Cha, you could just type it in. V? E. I think it's 23. Yeah, can I see? Yeah, perfect. Okay. What number is it? 23? 23. Right, that is 3.1 nano electron volts. Got that? Yep. Okay. Now, your mobile phone operates at a frequency of 900 megahertz and has a power output of 4 watts. How many photons are coming out of your phone during a phone call per second? Now, your phone, maybe mine is more like 4 watts. Um, so, what I mean by 4 watts is not, obviously there's more energy coming out from like the screen and all that. I'm just talking about the part that connects to the tower. Okay, this part that I think is about, it's about 4 watts, I think. So when you're on the phone, uh, there's a, a wave connecting to the tower for the signal. And this wave is made up of photons and the photons are moving out. And we want to know how many photons per second is that. So let's just think about what we need to do here. We have a frequency. So because we have the frequency, we can get the energy, okay? Because we have the energy, uh, we have the energy of one photon. Now, four watts is how many joules per second? It's four joules per second, yeah? So we could take the four and divide it by the energy in one photon. Let me just try and draw this to help you do it. So there's your phone. There's the wave. It's made of all the photons. One of these photons is HF, but that's just for one of them. And in one second, you get four joules of energy in this wave. So if you want to know how many photons there are, you can just do 4 divided by HF because that's the total energy and that's the energy for one photon. So if you just divide, then you'll get how many photons you need. And it'll be a really big number. So why don't you calculate it? See what you get. Calculate this here. Uh, the F is 900 <coughs> megahertz. 900 megahertz. What's mega? You know what it is, tell me. 10 to the power of 6. six. That's about um, 10, or oh, 10 to 24. That's about 10 Avogadros. Uh, that's about 10 moles of photons. Ah, close enough. It, it, it's still the same thing. It's about 10 moles of uh, photons. It's a lot of photons per second coming out of your phone. It's a lot. 10 to the 24. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know if you've done this in chemistry. Maybe you haven't. Electrons on the surface of a metal are trapped. They require energy to be freed. Therefore, they have negative potential energy. The energy required to free the electrons is called the work function. So, uh, just to explain what a little picture. 
If you have a metal, you know this from chemistry, there's lots of electrons in it. And they might be moving around, whatever. If you want to take one of the electrons out, you have to give it some energy because it's trapped. So the electron is like this, it's on the metal, it's trapped on the metal. If you want to free it, you're going to have to give it some energy. It's just like pushing something outside. It is like pushing outside, yeah. It's also a lot like um, ionization energy. You, you know, the energy you give to free it. You've done this in chemistry, right? Ionization, yeah. So uh, the work function is the minimum energy needed to remove an electron from a solid to the point outside the solid. Now, I, I said solid here, but usually the solid is a clean metal material um, because I think these are the easiest ones to free the electron from. So we usually make this guy a positive. So for example, if I say the work function is say two joules, what that means is you need to put two joules of energy into the electron to free it. That means the potential energy of the electron is minus two joules. Remember we said if the potential energy is negative, it means it's trapped. Do you remember that? So this guy is trapped with minus two joules of energy, meaning it needs two joules to be freed. Yeah. Okay, so that's not too bad. If you can write this definition down, this is the work function. Yeah, got that. Okay, so one way you can give the electron energy is with photons. So here's your metal, here's your electron, and you could have a photon here, and it comes along and it hits the electron and it disappears. So the energy that this photon had, that's HF, it can give its energy to the electron and then this could free the electron. So you can shine a photon on an electron and free the electron. So you said it's kind of like a, and that you knock something out. So it's kind of like the photon can knock the electron out of the metal. And this in physics is called um, the photoelectric effect. When a photon strikes a clean metal surface, it will cause the release of electrons from the metal surface if and only if the photon, photons provide enough energy. This is called the photoelectric effect. So if this guy has a work function of phi, and this has an energy of HF, this can only be freed if the HF is big enough. Okay, so, you know, if this guy was minus two joules, then how much does this need to be? It needs to be at least two joules, at least two joules, okay? If you free the electron, it's called the photoelectric effect. The reverse is also true, which is interesting. 
So imagine you have an electron here and you fire the electron onto the metal plate and it sticks. Well, guess what happens? A photon comes out, which is kind of crazy, isn't it? So you throw an electron, it sticks to the metal, and then a photon is released. So you can literally do forwards or backwards. Okay, This is called a photoelectric effect. Uh, you need to write all of that, but before, wait, before you write it, I'll tell you something interesting. <coughs> Do you remember the formula we did last time, Einstein's E equals MC squared? And I think some of you know this as his famous formula. Okay. Einstein won the Nobel Prize. You know the Nobel Prize? You know this prize, Nobel Prize? I don't know what it is in Chinese. It's the prize, where is it, it's Switzerland? No, Norway. What country is it in? Norway, isn't it? It's the prize every year in Norway for the best work in physics. It's like a million euros or something, the prize. Do you know this prize? No, okay, no problem. Anyways, Einstein won it, not for the formula we did last time. Einstein won it because of this. Einstein was the one who discovered the photoelectric effect. And it was actually this that earned him the prize uh, in physics about you know 100 years ago. Which is funny because most people would have thought it's the other formula that's more famous, the E equals mc squared, because everybody knows that. If it wasn't this, it was the photoelectric effect. Just, uh, I just think that's kind of it's interesting because you might not have even heard of this before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, that was good for him. That's like a million whatever it was at the time, not euros, but you know, it's big money if you win the prize. Okay, so I do need to try all of this, I'm afraid, so just write all of this. Matt will watch this later. Should we hide a message inside for him? Like an Easter egg or something? Do you have friends in the science class? Do you know anyone in science? Yeah. Who do you know? No. She's not. Some of them are in the UK today because they're doing their interviews for medicine. Yeah, I saw that. You saw that, yeah. I think it's like 10 of them. Do you know any of them? Doing the interviews? Uh, oh, you know Mubarak, yeah. He's doing the interviews, yeah. yeah. Which one? What nationality? Who is that? Is that going to be Chera? I don't know. 
Maybe, maybe, yeah. I was looking at the interviews. They sound very difficult. Did you see them? They put you in different. They put you in different situations. So like, they would say, "Okay, now imagine you're a doctor and you have to deliver bad news to a patient." <laughs> or they would say something like, "They would put you in situations like, um, oh, like really like really tough ones. Like you're a doctor, and they'd have an actor come in." And like the actor is fourteen years old and she's pregnant and she wants an abortion. What do you do? And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> this sounds difficult for like an eighteen, nineteen year old student to figure out, you know. Did they like do well? And it, it was at twelve o'clock, I think. So I don't know. Maybe it's over by now. Yeah. It's very. You guys are lucky. You just have to, you know, what write a personal statement or something. You know. <laughs> Those guys, that's, that sounds that sounds terrible, terrible. Okay, you got that? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Now, um, let's try and figure this table out together, okay? So, you have low frequency and low intensity. That means dim light. So, uh, here, here's the electron. If the light had a high frequency, then it means the energy here is very big. So when the electron is free, it, it has more energy than it needs, right? So for example, imagine the electron needed minus two joules, but this light has 20 joules. So where did the extra 18 joules go? Any ideas? Wasted, maybe. Not wasted, no, no. So wasted would have meant heat, but not heat here. So what happens is it becomes kinetic energy in the electron. It makes the electron go faster. Okay. Um, and dim light, dim light just means there's um, not so many photons. It's not as bright. There's less photons okay so let's try and figure this out together there's low frequency and low intensity so does that mean there will be many uh, electrons freed or not many electrons freed not many freed and what about the kinetic energy of the electrons will it be high or will it be low it'll be low because it's low frequency, meaning it didn't give much extra energy to the electron. So low frequency and low intensity means some freed electrons, but low kinetic energy. Right, what about the next one? High frequency and low intensity. So some or many freed electrons? Some freed electrons, good. High or low kinetic energy? Some freed electrons of high kinetic energy. Good, okay. Low frequency and high intensity. So, many or some free electrons? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, many and high or low kinetic energy. Low. Very good. Last one, Siva. Looks like you're getting them all. High frequency and high intensity. What's that? Many free electrons of high kinetic energy. Okay? So, um, this table would be good if you can write it down.
no problem. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, Joe? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, this equation, we can prove it quite simply together ourselves. All right, so I'll draw two pictures here, before and after. So in the picture here, we have our photon, and it's coming in, and we have our electron, and it's trapped. What is the energy here at the beginning? Well, what's the energy of the photon? HF. Yeah? And what's the energy of the trapped electron? Minus the work function. Yeah? Now, in the picture afterwards, the electron is now free. Off it goes. What energy does it have here in this picture? What's the energy here? There's no photon anymore. What's the energy? Kinetic. Right? So therefore, HF minus the work function equals KE. And we normally write this formula as KE plus the work function equals HF. That's how we normally write it, which is... It, the formula here is this side... And this is this side. But we don't usually write it like that. We usually write it like this. HF equals KE plus the work function. Um, so what I think I would prefer you to do is to actually write this down. It looks a bit better. I think the picture too is good. Drew this, And, uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. Right. And this is what Einstein won his Nobel Prize for. Um, okay. Let's have a look at an example here. So we have a, the work function for copper is 4.7 electron volts. A photon of wavelength 250 nanometers strikes the metal surface. After the photon strikes the metal surface, an electron is free. And First question, which I think you can all do, is what is the work function in joules? So can you all just convert that into joules? How do we convert this into joules? 
Oh, come on, how do you convert this to Jewish? You know, it's you gave me the opposite earlier, how to convert into electron volts. So, multiply by... Yes. So, can you multiply this by E to convert this into joules? What's wrong, Kim? You look shocked. You're shocked? You're shocked that Siva knew this? <laughs> so... Uh, can you multiply that by the, the E? Um, I think you don't have... Uh, Chow, can you... Sorry, can I borrow that for one sec? Thank you. E is... 23, three. isn't it? <coughs> if you don't... Oh, goodness. If you don't have... If you don't have E on your calculator, the electron constant... It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Minus 19? Yeah. So the answer you should get is this for the energy. You got that, yeah? Okay. Part two now. What is this V of the free electron? So if we use our formula, what was our formula? HF equals KE plus the work function, isn't it? Now, do we know the work function? We do. There it is there. Do we know the kinetic energy? We can. It's a half M V squared. And we're looking for the V squared. And the M is the mass of an electron. <coughs> so if you want, that's the mass of an electron, which is on your calculator, and you have it in your notes. Do we know H? We do. I gave that to you today. And do you know F? You do, because I gave them the wavelength. So you can convert the wavelength into frequency. Yeah? Uh, and so I think you should be able to solve this for V. I'll let you try that. I hope you can do this. So I want you to get the V. So I'll even make it a little bit easier for you. I can change this formula into H C over lambda, because C over lambda is the F, equals a half M V squared plus the work function. And I want the V here. You know everything else. Can you try that? Get the V for me. Now, see, but you don't have constants on your calculator, so you'll have to check your notes. Um, do you have them on yours? Is this? Mm, no. no. It's only Cho. Can I see your calculator? No, 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 it's his calculator. No, no, I mean, like, what brand is this? Oh, uh, Casio 991. Yeah, it's the uh, first time when we made night uh, uh, jump. Yes, she said you must buy it. Yeah, yeah. I recommend it. Yep. Chat video. It's okay. You have your constants in your notebook. If you go back a few pages, you have the mass of an electron. If you like, if you want to just use Google rather than check your notes, you can just type in mass of electron. And, uh, yeah. Is there a question? Oh, yeah. Confused, Chow? What is F? You, uh, you F, need, F, you need to calculate. I gave you the wavelength. F is C over lambda.
think there's a minus 31, right? Is it in the power? No. Three times ten to the eighth. We got answers, guys. Yeah. What you get, Zebra? Did you get an answer, Cho? No? Matt error. Wonderful answer. Shall we have a look? No. What I like to do is to rearrange the formula so I can just use my calculator in one go. Okay, so this is my formula here. Yeah? So I have hc over lambda minus the work function is equal to a half mv squared. So that means 2hc over lambda minus twice the work function equals mv squared. Yeah? So that means V would equal square root of 2HC over lambda minus twice the work function all over mass of the electron. Now I'm going to open my calculator and type all of that in and see what I get. Whoops. Where's it going? Okay. Two. Okay. Square root mass of electron What's going on guys? Are you being good? Uh, seven point five three times 10 to the power of minus 19 and then uh, Cho uh, what number is H on your calculator please H 
Uh, six. Six? Yeah. And what number is C0? C0, 28. Thank you. And 250, what did I say? 250 nanometers? So 250 times 10 to the power of minus 9. There you go. So that's the speed of the electron. What do you guys whisper about all the time? Calculation. The calculator? Tommy, what's your secrets? No secret. No secrets? Yeah. Are you sure? No, I don't know if I believe you. Okay, he's got that. So what did you mistype, Siva, or what? Uh, I think you were tired. Yeah. Continue. Oops. Okay, so the work function, uh, this means the electron has a negative potential energy. In order to free the electron, it needs to have the, that amount of energy. If it has exactly this energy, then the electron will just about be freed. That is, so let me explain. This is what I want. I want the photon to hit the electron and the electron to just just about be freed but the kinetic energy is nearly zero so I just about want to free the electron so if I use my formula HF <coughs> equals KE plus the work function then this is a uh, zero so you get HF equals the work function so you get F equals the work function over H and this is the minimum frequency. I need my frequency to be more than or equal to this. So we call this the threshold frequency, F0. That's the absolute minimum frequency I need to free the electron. Um, let's see, did I write it down here? Yeah, no, I think... Uh, yeah, you can just write that down. You can write that down, and then I'll just write a definition underneath. Trash. Threshold frequency. I'll be nice to see the <laughs> You got that out deck? Yeah. You got that? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> so look, um I've given you the work function of gold and I want to know the threshold frequency. So you can just use work function over H. The only problem is, what do you need to do to this first? Convert to joules. Okay. So can you give me the um, 
threshold frequency keys. don't really need to worry so much about the B part, okay? Just the just the A part. I just want the threshold frequency. Two, three, ten to the fifteen. Do you get that, guys? Yeah. So the last thing to say is what is uh, useful about this photoelectric effect. So I'll just draw some very simple device here. So imagine I have a piece of metal, and uh, I put inside some glass. And it's a vacuum as well, meaning no air inside, okay? And then I put another piece of metal actually here. And here are my electrons. Now when the light comes into the glass and hits the electron, what will happen? Well, it, yeah, it'll be freed. So the electron then moves this way and hits this plate. Now if I connect this you know, maybe to a few of these, but I'll just draw one in the picture. What would happen here? Well, the electron would be freed and then the electron starts moving around the circuit. So that means you have a current going this way. So if you have a current, then that means you can put a resistor here and you could do some work. So in other words, what you could do is you could take the light energy which is HF that HF frees the electron the electron has kinetic energy and then that kinetic energy uh, could make some work here so in other words what you have is a very simple solar panel in fact what's on your calculator you see the metal on the top so what happens is when the light you see the little panel on the, the, the rectangle on the top right yeah do you see it? On the calculator, it's, he it's here. This part here. Yeah, that part there. So what happens is the, electro uh, the photon from the light hits this metal in here, inside the glass. It frees the electron, and the electron travels in a circuit. And then it does some work in the circuit, and then returns back to the metal. So you have a simple circuit. So this is the photoelectric effect. You can use it to make solar panels. Yeah. So it's a useful. Uh, the there are other ways of making electricity from solar energy, but this is one simple way because it's very simple. All you need is a clean metal, glass container, and a vacuum. That's all. It's very simple. So this, if this breaks, then you know if you crack it, then I don't think it will work because then the what happens then is uh, if you break it, the air gets in. So if this fills up with air, then it means when the electron is freed, instead of hitting the other plate, it bounces off the air, so it can't easily travel to the other plate. Do you understand? So that's why it needs to be a vacuum. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I think that's all for this one here. Yeah, so I gave you the questions there. Yeah, I know, I know. Look, I, I won't push your brain cells for two lessons. I'll just let you work on these questions because I'm looking at you and I don't think you can manage two physics topics today. Would that be right? Yeah. <laughs> Siva is the only one who looks like she has enough energy, maybe, to manage two physics topics, but I'm not even sure. What do you think, Siva? Could you manage two topics? Yeah, but I don't think your classmates could. Look at them. Just, just last one lesson. Yeah, we'll do that next time.
So what you can do now is you can work on these questions here. You think she could? Yeah, I could just chew. You want to finish today and uh, do um, tutorial next time. Is that okay? So we have one vote for two. What do you think? One or two, Siva? They don't need to check with Kim. What do you want, Siva? Right, two. Kim? Yes. Two? You sure you guys can handle it? I just look kind of sweet. Okay, fine. That's fine. If you think you can handle it, we'll, we'll try and do two. Right, let me close this. No, I shouldn't. Uh, sorry, let me stop this. I'm going to do. <coughs>